So let's have a quick look at Newton's laws of motion. Uh, there's three key laws of motion, but we're just going to look at the first two here. That's the first law and the second law. So his first law states that an object will remain at rest or with constant velocity unless acted on by some net external force. This means if you've got some object and it is sat stationary or moving with a constant velocity then it will continue to do so forever and ever and ever and ever until I apply some force to it. So if I apply a force to my object that is at rest uh, then it will start to move. In fact it will accelerate. Similarly this object moving in a constant velocity um, if I apply some net external force to it that will also start to change its velocity. It might slow down or speed up or change its direction. The second law then tells us exactly how we work out how much that object is going to accelerate. And it tells us that it depends on the mass. So it tells us that when we add up all of the forces acting on an object we'll get some net force and that is going to be equal to the product of its mass and acceleration. Sometimes this is also written as being uh, the net force being equal to the rate of change of momentum. So here, this sigma f, this sum of all the forces, is equivalent to the mass of the object times the acceleration it experiences. Our first law is a special case, where if uh, the acceleration is zero, then the sum of the forces are zero. Or equivalently, if there's no net force on it, then our acceleration will be zero. So, let's try a quick little calculation. Um, just to example this second law. So let's say uh, we've got an object here um, and it's experiencing a downwards force of 3 newtons and it has a mass of uh, 6 kilos. Then uh, if this 3 newtons is the only force acting on it, we can find out what its acceleration will be. So our F is MA. Summing all the forces is nice and easy when we've only got one, so we've got 3 is our mass, which is 6, times our acceleration. So our acceleration is just going to be half of a metre per second squared. Um, we could see what happens if we add a couple more forces to it. So if we had another force acting upwards on this object, and this was uh, 2 newtons, now we do need to sum the forces. And our sigma f is going to be this 3, and this 2 newton force is acting in the opposite direction. So we're going to take that away, 3 minus 2, to give us 1 newton. And when we take this and put it over here, we're this time going to have an acceleration equal to one sixth of a meter per second squared. So that's this one newton divided by the six kilos to give us our acceleration, which is just this rearranged with our one newton substituted in instead. So this is uh, Newton's first law becomes very useful when we're looking at bodies in equilibrium. We know that if something is in equilibrium, i.e. it's not accelerating, then we know the sum of all the forces acting on it must be um, equal to zero to give us no acceleration. So if we now wanted to bring this object into equilibrium, i.e. so that there was no net force, then we would need to apply one more force and it would need to be another upwards force of one newton. So our net force from these two forces, this one and this one, is down by one newton. So if we wanted to balance that, we'd have to have another one that's up by one newton um, to compensate. So we can use Newton's first law, the concept of this equilibrium, um, when we know an object is at equilibrium, to work out forces through the second law as well, I guess.